Hi. Real Earth Care. Isaiah 24, 4 to 6. The earth mourns and dries up, and the land wastes away and withers. Even the greatest people on earth waste away. The earth suffers for the sins of its people, for they have twisted God's instructions, violated His laws, and broken His everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must pay the price for their sin. In the distinguished words of Pope John Paul II, when man turns his back on the Creator's plans, he provokes a disorder which has inevitable repercussions on the rest of the created order. If man is not at peace with God, then earth itself cannot be at peace. Real Earth Care. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome, welcome to Lion's Roar 3.8. Amos 3.8 tells us, A lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy. My name is George Magalhães. And we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip and release Christ-like disciples, both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as, as, well as providing you with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today, I want to talk to you about real earth care. I know it's a little bit of a weird title, but for the sake of the times that we are living in and for the sake of our uh, social media overlords, um, I decided to name it this way. Real Earth Care, taking us to our main verse today. And our main verse today comes from the book of Isaiah 24, 4 to 6, Isaiah 24, 4 to 6, and I'm going to be reading it from the message version this time. The earth turns gaunt and grey, the world silent and sad, sky and land lifeless, colourless. Earth is polluted by its very own people who have broken the laws its laws, disrupted, disrupted its order, violated the sacred and eternal covenant. Therefore, a curse like a cancer ravages the earth. Its people pay the price for their sacrilege. They dwindle away, dying out one by one. Wow. George, what are you talking about today? Okay, let's get to it. Amen. Today I want to talk to, to you about, in fact, today we're going to be discussing what, what some wise person would say, has said. Calling someone a conspiracy theorist is the best way non-thinkers can dismiss intelligent analysis and scurry back to their childlike illusions inside government and media. Today's discussion is without any doubt the hottest topic, the latest global fab. And unless you've got your head in the sand, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Healing, saving, CC, real earth care. I will not waste my time debating on the cre credibility of this matter. Cause and effect, after all our benevolent overlords are obviously very omniscient, the only experts in all the matters, only they are able to make the necessary, whatever it takes, aggressive, destructive, punitive measures to eliminate all opposing views and narratives, for the sake of our well-being, of course. After all, according to their own findings, they're the, they're the ones who are the most experts. In fact, they're the ones who created this issue in the first place. Therefore, therefore, making them the most suitable candidates to solve it, right? So, thank you, O benevolent ones. 
You know, the truth is, whether you're a believer or as the experts love to label any questioner a denier, Earth is most definitely in torment. Isaiah 24, 4-6, as we just read, talks about that. And finding the true solutions is where we should focus our time, the wisest move for humanity and all of creation, if we truly want, if we truly want salvation. Therefore, today we're going to be discussing real earth care. I'm going to be talking about some, sorry, I'm not going to be talking about some environmental organization sales pitch or a new age fab or politically driven agenda or propaganda. No, I mean truly the one and only, the one and only real answer to saving Earth and its inhabitants. Now, in the well-founded words of Tony Campolo, the Bible makes it clear a basic truth that we self-centered humans find difficult to accept. Namely, that the natural universe was not created primarily for us. There is no doubt that God wants us to enjoy it and even use its resources to optimize a good life for ourselves. But the ultimate purpose of creation is worship. Nature and all living things were created to glorify God. Nature and all created things were created to glorify God. Now, taking a creationist biblical viewpoint, the truth will unravel the cause and effect and consequently reveal the real earth care solution. Faith the facts. Faith, the facts, is where we'll spend most of our time today examining foundational facts on creation, the earth and all its inhabitants, cause and effect, and of course the solution. Before ending today's program, with God cares. King David's poetic song on the true nature of God towards earth and all his wonderful creation. You ready? Let's get to it. All right, faith the facts. Let's look at creation first. Let's look at creation. In Genesis 1, 26, Genesis 1, 26, and I'm going to be reading from different Bible versions. Genesis 1, 26, Amplified Classic Version, tells us, God said, let us, that means Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind, mankind in our image after our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beasts, and over all of the earth. <gasps> wow. And over everything that creeps upon the earth. Who was given authority to rule over the earth? Me and you. We, believers, we, the mankind who were created in his image, as we just read. Genesis 2.15 goes on to say, in Genesis 2.15, again, Amplified Classic, And the Lord God took the man, mankind, and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and guard and keep it. It is our responsibility to tend and guard and keep it, to look after the earth. And I'll show you why. Psalm 24, verse 1. In Psalm 24, verse 1, we must understand, by the way, the foundations first before we get to the rest. Because if your foundation is wobbly, if your foundation is incorrect, everything else will come crumbling down. Everything, every decision, everything else you do in life, whether you're in government, whether you're at home, wherever you are, workplace, if your foundation is not correct, everything will come crumbling down. So Psalm 24 verse 1, 
Psalm 24 verse 1 in the Amplified Classic. The earth is the Lord's. Didn't we just establish that before? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. The world and they that dwell in it. In other words, everything that has been created, everything belongs to the Lord. Psalm 89 verse 11. In Psalm 89 verse 11, Amplified Classic. The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours, the world and all that is in it, you have founded them. Talking to God. He created it, He's founded it, and everything on heaven, on earth, and all that is in it belongs to the Lord. Go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 10 verse 14. In Deuteronomy 10 verse 14 in the Amplified Classic Version, we read, Behold the heavens and the heaven of heavens. Behold the heavens and the heaven of of heavens belong to the Lord your God, the earth also, with all that is in it and on it. Wow! That verse alone is an explosion of revelation. Everything, the heavens and the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the earth also, all that is in it and all that is on it. Psalm 115, Psalm 115, 16, in the Amplified Classic Version. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth He has given to the children of men. Is there a contradiction here? No, there isn't. If you look at what given means, that He has given, it's talking about given us authority to rule. He is the ultimate sovereign. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is God. There is none above Him. And He, everything belongs to Him. But then He assigned us, humanity, authority to rule over the earth. Get it? So He assigned us, humanity, authority to rule what He loves over all His lovely and good creation. John 1 verse 3. In John 1, verse 3, in the Amplified Classic Version, we read, All things were made and came into existence through Him. And without Him was not even one thing made that has come into being. Again, we see that everything comes down to the foundation. Everything was created by God for God. Psalm 65, Psalm 65, 9 to 13. Psalm 65, 9 to 13. And this time I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. You take care of the earth and water it. Talking about God, of course. You take care of the earth and water it. Make it rich and fertile. The river of God has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grain. For you have ordered it. So, you drench the ploughed ground with rain, melting the clods and leveling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless it abundant crops. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture, and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks of sheep, and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. Even creation itself, the rocks, the mountains, the trees, the, 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 the animals, everything sings with joy. And what we just read tells us that we have the Creator, the ultimate Creator, God Himself. He's Right now, as we read, as we just heard, he's backing us up and saying, okay, I give you authority to look after it, to tend the earth, to protect it, to guard it. And I will be the one who will water it. I will be the one who will make it flourish, make it bloom. You will never run out. Everything that God created, including the earth, 
is fruitful. Is everlasting fruitfulness. Remember last week? Why do you think a lot of these so-called leaders look it up? Look it up. Every year, there's people dying on earth of starvation, but every year, governments waste food. And I mean, they waste food. And I'm not talking about some local uh, shopping center that throws their food in the rubbish bin if it's not sold after a certain day. I I'm talking about tons and tons of food all over the world gets wasted instead of being given to the poor. We do not have a shortage. We never had a shortage. We'll never have a shortage. When it comes to God's promise, He never lets us down. He's promised us, tend, guard it, look after it, and I will make it flourish. If it's not flourishing, it's because we intentionally are going against God's seed. We're aligning ourselves with the wrong seed. He promises and He's never failed. We got more than enough. More than enough. Hence the fact they even have to stop ships. They even have to create circumstances to stop food shortages. and I mean, to start food shortages and all that sort of stuff. It's... It's there, clear and simple. We just read quite a few verses stating, if we know that we know who is the creator of all the universe, if we know that this creator, this God, promises us that everything he's created will be fruitful and that he'll never let us down, why are we facing what we're facing? Because of evil, because of sin, because of the influence of the evil one. When we decide to align ourselves with the evil one rather than God, we bring a curse upon the earth, as we just read at the beginning. We bring a curse upon the earth. And the only thing that can wash that away, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later on, is what Jesus done, the complete work of Jesus. Putting our faith in his complete work. But I'm going ahead of myself. Let's jump to Revelation 4.11. In Revelation 4.11, from the voice translation... Excuse me. Worthy are you, O Lord. Worthy are you, O God, to receive glory and honor and power. You alone created all things, and through your will and by your design, they exist and were created. Again, how much more? I can go on and on. I'm giving you just a few tonight for the sake of time. Because... The Word of God is complete with facts. Earth itself cries out, proves, gives us facts of the Creator Himself, of God having created and having made it abundant, made it fruitful for us. Genesis 1 verse 31. Genesis 1 verse 31 and... This will be the last verse in this section, the creation section. In the Amplified Classic Version, we read, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It was very good. It, there was no shortages. There was not just enough. It was very good. Look up what that very good means in the original Aramaic language. And you'll see what very good means. There is no lack. There never will be a lack. It's suitable. It's pleasant. It's enough. And he approved it completely. And there was evening and there was morning, a sixth day. He created it with so much pleasure. He said that it was good. He, was, he promised that he would always make the earth fruitful, and then he assigned us authority to tend, to look after it, and say, but by, and, and by the way, I'll make sure that even, even if you stuff up, even if you, know, you don't know what you're doing, don't worry. Tend after it, guard it, look after it, and I will make it fruitful. That's his promise. 
So why, George? So why then are we having the problems we're having in the world? Why then have we had, we look at history, we had all these issues? I mentioned a little bit just before, a couple of minutes ago. But let's look into the cause and effect. What is the cause and effect? Well, Numbers 35, verse 33. In Numbers 35, verse 33, in the Amplified Version, we read, So you shall not pollute and defile the land in which you live. For the shedding of innocent blood pollutes and defiles the land. No atonement, expiation can be made, or substitution, in other words, can be made for the land, for the innocent blood shed in it, except by the blood ex execution of him who shed it. Now, that was in the Old Covenant. We have in the New Covenant, Jesus, who... His blood was shed on the cross on our behalf for all sin. For, for all sin, including that. If you put your faith on the blood of Jesus, if you put your faith on His finished work on, the, on, on Calvary, on His resurrection, if you put faith on Him, you are covered. However, what does it say here? Do not pollute, do not defile the land. And he talks about, what, what is it talking about? Blood? It's talking about greed, murder. All those things that we see is constantly happening in the world. People taking advantage of other people. Human trafficking. Corruption in governments. People abusing their, 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 their power, etc., etc., etc. When there is evil, sin. Remember, what we've been learning about. We are just passing through. We're made in God's image. But as the Bible tells us, we're like aliens. We're strangers, sojourners. We are passing through earth. This is not where we come from. We are made in His image. Made from dirt. But we come, we are first of all spirit beings made in His image. And we are here on a mission. We are on a, in a fallen world. That's the truth. We're in a fallen world. However, we carry the kingdom of God inside of us. And if we join in sin, then sin spreads like a virus. Sin spreads. Sin is contagious. Sin brings corruption. Sin pollutes the earth and the land. Even the land cannot stand for the sin of the world. That's why the land cries out. That's why you see earthquakes and all those things. Because most of the time when that happens, it's got to do with the land has had enough of all the sin that it witnesses. The land, the, the, the earth is crying out and saying, enough, we can't stand this any longer. That is the truth. That is the cause and effect of what's going on on earth. No atonement or expiation can be made for the land for the innocent blood shed in it, except for the blood or execution of him who shed it. Shed it. Now, Jesus came and he said, okay, I'll take the blame. I'll go on that cross. And if all they need to do to be saved, all they need to do is put their faith in my finished work. Jeremiah 2.7, Jeremiah 2.7, in the Amplified Classic Version, And I brought you into a plentiful land to enjoy its fruits and good things. It doesn't talk about bad, bad things. It doesn't say, and enjoy good things sometimes when you behave. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say any, it says to enjoy its fruits and good things. He's saying, in my part, on my side of the cooperation of the partnership, I'm telling you, I will always produce good things, fruits and good things. Now, it's up to you. What will you do? It goes on to say, but when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. In other words, detestable and loathsome. It's humanity that's caused these problems. We have caused these problems. When I say we, I'm not saying we specifically, even though every single one of us, we've, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all sinned and fallen short. So we all do something. We've all contributed somehow to the pollution, to the, to the defilement and, and 
yeah, pollution of the world, of the earth. We have. Let's continue. Because if I say something else, it'll go in a different direction. Jeremiah 12.4. Let's look at Jeremiah 12.4. In the message version. How long do we have to put up with this? The country depressed. The farms in ruin. Sounds familiar? And all because of lazy gardeners and farmers. Um, all because of really wicked middle class people and poor people that just can't stop polluting this world. Let's be real here. Let's let's really be real here. Who really is, as we said at the beginning, who really is making the biggest impact, negative impact on Earth? Interesting. It'd be interesting to see if we actually took our time to research to see who really is making that impact. However, it is every single one of us, every single individual has a responsibility, has a part to play in looking after the earth. After all, the earth, as we read at the beginning, was created by God for God. He takes pleasure in his whole creation. So Jeremiah 12 verse 4. Now I'm not saying you, you need to become a tree hugger and all this sort of stuff and worship Mother Earth. And, and, and Come on. Seriously, creation was made for the Creator, not the other way. And we were given authority over the earth, not the other way. So how long do we have to put up with this? The country depressed, the farms in ruin, and all because of wickedness. These wicked lives. Even animals and birds are dying off because they will have nothing to do with God and think God has nothing to do with them. See, so talking about wickedness, the more wickedness, the more sin in the world, the more greed, the more evil, the more it will affect not just humanity, but it affects earth itself. The earth cannot stand because earth was created by God and it was made to be fruitful and to be enjoyed and to be holy and to be, it was created in a worship manner to God. But if there's sin running rampant, the, even the earth itself cannot stand that. Isaiah 24, Isaiah 24, 4 to 6, our main verse today. And I'm going to be reading from the voice translation this time. So the earth mourns. How can it not? The earth mourns, droops wearily down. The world languishes and droops. The high and mighty languish in grief. The earth is polluted by those who live on it. They pay no attention to God's teaching. They violate His directives cause and effect, they pay no attention to God's teaching, they violate His directives and break the everlasting covenant. Consequently, a nasty curse consumes the earth, and those who inhabit it are to blame for it. Pure and simple. Leviticus 18.28 Leviticus 18.28 in the voice version. So do not desecrate the land, or the land will vomit you from it, as it has done to those who were there before you. As I've been saying, creation cannot even stand the wickedness that's going on on earth. That's why the creation is crying out. The cre creation is having a reaction and saying, no, enough. Romans 8, 22. In Romans 8, 22, the Passion Translation to this day, we are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation, as if it were in the contra contractions, sorry, as if it were in the contractions of labor for childbirth. To this day, we are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation, as if it were in the contractions of labor for childbirth. That is the cause and effect of sin, of wickedness, of evil on earth. So what is the solution, George? Tell us then. What can we do? Because by the sounds of what you said, it sounds so over-spiritual. It sounds almost impossible to solve. No, there is a solution. And it's much simpler 
than the so-called experts are feeding us. And this solution benefits all. Not just some, by the way. Solution, Revelation 11.18. Revelation 11.18 shows us, and I want to say this first, this verse, shows us that we do not serve a God. We do not have a creator or God. And I say, not a God. God. Who does not care about creation, does not care about the earth, does not care about us. No, we do serve a God that cares very much. He loves what he created. He loves what he created. He was very good. And he takes pleasure in his creation. Revelation 11.18 tells us the nations have raged against you. Sounds familiar? Against him. Your wrath has finally come. It is now time to judge all of the dead, to give a just reward to your servants, the prophets, and to the saints and all who honor your name, both the small and the great, and to destroy those who cause destruction to the earth. You're talking about his coming. Yes, I'm talking about his second coming. That's what that verse is talking about. When he comes back, he will do that. He's promised us, promised us that. However, this also shows us his character. That's what I wanted to point out. Shows us the nature and the character of God, of the Creator, Almighty Creator. He takes it very serious how we treat his creation. Ephesians 1, 7 to 10. Ephesians 1, 7 to 10 in the message version tells us, because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, who? The Messiah. The Christ, Jesus, in other words, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross were a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all, by all our misdeeds. All. And not just belly free either abundantly free. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. In Christ Jesus, everything is restored. Everything is healed. Everything is cared for in His finished work. As we just read, as we put our faith in Christ Jesus, we follow His example. We look after His creation. He's the one who will give us the power. He's the one that will make it fruitful. But as we live Christ-like life, lives we will flourish i mean the world is in a mess yet they have to intentionally be be destroying food and farms and you know what they're intentionally having to do that can you imagine colossians 120 Colossians 1.20 goes on to confirm what is our solution. Amplified classic version. And God purposed that through by the service, that through by the service, the intervention of him, the son, that means Jesus, all things should be completely reconciled, restored in other words, back to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, as through him the Father made peace by means of the blood of his cross. We've been destroying the world, destroying each other, destroying all sorts of things. Somebody had to pay for that. And Jesus said, you know what, Father, I'll do it. I'll pay for it. And the only thing we need to do is put our faith in him. As we put our faith in him, live Christ-like lives. Because he will equip us. He will teach us how to live lives where we steward his creation, steward humanity, steward the finances and the resources he gives us, he promises that he will make us fruitful. He'll make the earth fruitful. He'll, he'll make it living fruitfulness. 
everlasting fruitfulness. By what? By the means of what? Of his completed work. By faith in his completed work. By following Jesus. He is the solution to all things. 2 Chronicles 7.14 2 Chronicles 7.14 in the New Living Translation tells us that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore, heal their land. Did you notice here it doesn't even say if all people on earth. It says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore, that means heal, heal their land. It starts with the people of God, with the church. We just like Abraham did for Lot, we can intercede, step in the gap for the world. If the world continues to live in a fallen world, the world wants to continue to live in a fallen world, wants to continue to ignore God, we, the church, it starts with us. Revival, all things starts with us. We can step in, we can stand in the gap and say, you know what? Forgive us. Forgive us for our wickedness, Lord. Guide us and help us. Forgive us and help us through this. And the Lord promises that He'll forgive us of our sins and He will restore and heal the land. He will heal the land while others are still doing the bad things they're doing. Why do you think, I'll say it again, they're still intentionally, constantly, aggressively going after the farms and all the other stuff and destroying all these things. up, They can't even keep up with the fruitfulness of God. They can't. They cannot. They cannot. And if you think that's a conspiracy theory, then I'll, in the nicest loving way, let me just say you need to wake up, take your head out of the sand, and seriously, spend at least... 10, 15 minutes, research, go out there, research, and find out what's really going on in the world. And I'm not talking about listening to these mainstream media. Do the work for yourself. Use your brain. Go out there, do the research, and you'll see what's really going on. This is a war for the souls of humanity. That's what's going on in the world right now. And when we need to get to the truth, and the truth is Jesus. That is the only solution here. We need to repent, and it starts with the church. Repent for the wickedness and sin of the world, and God promises. Look, there is these videos. You might be able to find that online, maybe not. And I say videos because it's way back when I was in Bible college. They were in um, VHS tapes, so maybe they've transferred it to digital. But you can actually go and see these uh, documentary videos called The Transformation. Transformation? Yeah, The Transformation. I'm pretty sure it's called The Transformation. He talks about all these countries. And I mean, real documentaries. This is no joke. They, they show it in the documentaries. Countries like Colombia, which used to be the drug, drug capital of the world. Not anymore now. It's Mexico or whatever. Um, and God healed the land in supernatural ways. Fiji etc. So it, it gives you all these different uh, testimonies of all these different countries that were going through so much crime, so much drugs, so much wickedness. And as the land, as the people of the land, the people, and when I say people, I mean the people of God, turned to God, asked God for forgiveness, repented for their wickedness. God began to heal, not, not just heal, bring revival to the land, to, to the people, to humanity, but also heal the land. Heal the land. I'm talking about, for example, in Colombia, where they were growing most of the, the, the drugs in the world. So the land was infested, infected with all the all the drugs, all the, what do you call it, the, the, the bad plants that they were planting. Yet God healed the land and they were growing vegetables and fruits and all sorts of stuff in incredible amounts. God promises that he will heal the land. 
If only my people humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55, 6 to 13, in the message version, tells us, and this is a long one, but we'll finish here. Isaiah 55, 6 to 13. Seek God while he's here to be found. Pray to him while he's close at hand. Let the wicked abandon their way of life and the evil their way of thinking. Let them come back to God, who is merciful. Come back to our God, who is lavish with forgiveness. I don't think the way you think. This is God talking to us. The way you work isn't the way I work. God's decree. For as the sky soars above, high above earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Just as rain and snow descend from the skies and don't go back until they've watered the earth, doing their work of making things grow and blossom, producing seed for farmers and food for the hungry, so will the words that come out of my mouth not come back empty-handed. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. So you'll go out in joy. You'll be led into a whole and complete life. The mountains and hills will lead the parade, bursting with song. All the trees of the forest will join the procession, exuberant with applause. No more thistles, but giant sequoias. No more thorn bushes, but stately pines. Monuments to me, to God, living and lasting evidence of God. All creation was created by God, for God. It's an act of worship. Even creation, even earth itself, is crying out to worship Him. Cannot stop worshipping Him. I had something else. I'll leave that for another day. Let us go on to the beautiful, prophetic song that King David himself wrote. God cares. Psalm 65, 1 to 13. Psalm 65, 1 to 13. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation. God in Zion. To you, even silence is praise. You who answers prayer. All of humanity comes before you with their requests. Though we are overcome by our many sins, your sacrifice covers them all. How blessed is the one who you choose to live near you in your courts. The beauty of your house, your holy temple satisfies us. You answer our prayers with amazing wonders and with all inspiring displays of power. You are the righteous God who helps us like a father. Everyone, everywhere looks to you, for you are the confidence of all the earth, even the furthest islands of the sea. What a jaw-dropping, astounding power is yours. You are the mountain maker who sets them all in place. You muzzle the roar of the mighty seas and the rage of mobs with their nosy riots. O oh God, to the furthest corners of the planet, people will stand in awe, startled and stunned by your signs and wonders. Sunrise brilliance and sunset beauty both take turns, singing their songs of joy to you. Your visitations of glory bless the earth. The rivers of God overflow and enrich it. You paint the wheat fields golden as you provide rich harvests. Every field is watered. With the abundance of rain, showers soaking the earth and softening its clods, causing need seeds to sprout throughout the land. You crown the earth with the fruits of your goodness. Wherever you go, the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with oil. Luxuriant, luxuriant green pastures boast of your bounty as you make every hillside blossom with joy. 
The grazing meadows are covered with flocks and the fertile valleys are clothed with grain, each one dancing and shouting for joy, creation's celebration. They're all singing their songs of praise to you. What an amazing, what an amazing poetic psalm. And that was Psalm 65, 1 to 13. If we're really serious, if we're really serious about saving the earth, if we're really serious about saving humanity, saving all creation, real earth care means turning to Jesus. Only He is the solution. He is the solution. We must repent. Turn from our wicked ways. Turn to Jesus. And he promises that he'll forgive us of our sins and he will heal the land. As John Paul, Pope John Paul II said, when man turns his back on the Creator's plans, he provokes a disorder which has inevitable repercussions on the rest of the created order. If man is not at peace with God, then earth cannot, earth itself cannot be at peace. I don't know if you're new here, but I want to give you a chance. I want to give you a chance to meet this Jesus. Because the Word of God is very clear. We were created in His image for Him, by Him, for Him. And yes, He takes pleasure in you. He doesn't want you to be a puppet. Hence the reason why He gave you free will. Hence the reason why we're in the mess that we are. Because He wants a real relationship. He doesn't want to be a puppet, master puppeteer. He wants a real relationship, and that requires us to have free will, to be willing to have a relationship with Him. And that's why, if you're here, and you're not yet a believer, this is your chance. This is your chance to be reconciled to your Creator, to your Father, to your God. You who are the only creation made in His image. Do you realize that? We, humanity, were the only ones created in God's image. Hence the reason why the devil is so hell-bent on attacking us. That's the truth, because the devil is jealous of who we are, of what God created. We, mankind. Romans 10, 9-10 to tells us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. It's as simple as that. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. But then it doesn't stop there. Because yes, there is a spiritual war going on for the souls of humanity. So how do we overcome that? What do we have to do, George? We have to realize first that we are not... We're not human beings. We're not just human beings with a soul and a spirit. Some people may believe that. No. We are spirit beings first. We are made in God's image. And God is spirit. We are spirit beings with a soul and a body. body our bodies are just vehicles for the work that we have, for the mission, for the life that we have here on earth. Romans 10 Sorry, Titus 3, verse 5. In Titus 3, verse 5, it goes on to, tells us, to tell us, then he saved us. So from the moment you give your life to God, okay, you are saved. So what next, George? How do we overcome spiritual things? Well, you're a spirit being, so you have to realize that once you give your life to God, you're reconciled to God, then there is a there is an exchange there. Let's read. Not because we were good enough to be saved, but because of His kindness. We have to remember that. It's not our works. And Because of His kindness and pity, His love, His mercy, His grace. Not just mercy, His grace. By washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. That's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. That's talking about us. When we give our lives to Jesus, we become a new creation. God washes us clean with the blood of Jesus, the blood that He shed on that cross. He washes us clean of all sin, 
What is St. George? Because I know the world's got this misconception and had this propaganda misinformation that's that's been spread all over the world like a virus that, oh, sin means you're a bad person. No, sin means in the simplistic, the most simple definition is when we try to live our lives without God. That is a sin. Of course, there's other specific things, but it's as simple as that. When you try to live without God, you're sinning because you were created by Him for Him. And that's why you feel that emptiness. That's why some turn to, to all sorts of things, to women, to men, to drugs, to whatever, to music, to money, to greed. And you'll never be satisfied until you get reconciled to your Creator, to who you've been created for. That's what it's talking about here. The moment you give your life to God, He washes away all the sin. The nature of sin itself it gets washed away from you and you become a new creation. Now as a new creation, you need to be filled again. And what comes into your life? What fills you up? The very Spirit of God. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the living God comes upon you and lives inside of you. But you have to want it. It's like a gift. You say, yes, Lord. So we, in a minute, we're going to do that. We're going to pray. And you can repeat after me if you want. There's no generic prayer. But if you feel nervous or whatever and you need some guidance, you can repeat after me. We have to remember at the end of the day that the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. So we need to declare with our mouths the Lord Jesus. Ask him to come and be our Lord. Choose to believe that God raised him from the dead. Because faith, any decision in faith comes from a choice first. And then if you need more faith, God will give you faith. It's a gift. Even more faith. And then ask the Holy Spirit to come. Fill me. Fill me with your presence. And He comes and lives inside of you. You become His temple, His synagogue, His indwelling, His house, His, his church where He dwells inside of you. And He will teach you and He will guide you and He will comfort you and He will correct you and He will... Through, through life. He will be your most trusted advisor more he, he'll guide you every step every step of the way he'll teach you how to use the spiritual giftings because he comes with fire fire represents power represents god's authority god's uh, uh sovereignty and he brings fire he brings gifts with him you ready we're gonna do that right now Lord, we thank you. I thank you for this opportunity as I pray for my, with my brother and sister right now in Jesus' name. And even those who are believers already, but they want to rededicate their lives back to you. Lord, I pray that as we pray right now, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're always listening to us. I thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful finished work on that cross. I thank you for today's word and that you continue to give us more and more understanding, more revelation of this word and help us to be responsible each and every single one of us. Lord, right now, as I pray, I thank you that you will come, Holy Spirit, and fill us afresh. You can repeat after me. Lord, you promise that if I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. From this day forward, I give my life to you, Jesus. I choose to serve you. I make you my Lord and Savior. And like Jesus, I die to my old life and I rise as a new creation by the power of of God's resurrection. Come Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence. And with fire. Right now in Jesus mighty name. I pray for my sister my brother Lord. And just like you did. With your apostles. With your disciples. I breathe the breath of life over them. In Jesus name. And I say receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says that our God is a, is a fire, is a consuming fire. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall, Lord. Yes, Lord, rekindle that fire that is within us, within our spirits. Set us alight. Make us 
your flames of fire, your revival fire that cannot be quenched. Right now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Welcome back to the kingdom family. Some of you, it's okay. Relax. Allow the Holy Spirit to be ministering. He's ministering. He's touching you. He's healing you. Some of you need healing. Some of you need deliverance. And that's what He's doing right now. That's why you may be feeling some weird sensations. Maybe you feel like some heaviness just lifted and you got delivered for what, from whatever you were going through. Maybe you feel like you, you, like electricity is running through your body. Maybe you feel this massive heat is the presence of God. Maybe you feel like electricity running through your back or whatever it is. Just relax. Allow God Himself, is the very Spirit of God, to be touching you, to be healing you, to be restoring you. He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. Congratulations once again. Don't forget it's so important that you get connected with a church. When I mean a church, I'm not talking about a specific building. I'm talking about the people, the body of Christ. Get connected with the church, with a Bible speaking, teaching, Holy Spirit fire church that will give you the opportunity to not only... Uh, uh, be encouraged, but be able to encourage others. Where you have a safe place to 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 serve as well and be served. Where you have a safe place to ex to, to to exercise the giftings that God has upon your life. It's so important that we spend time, real fellowship with Christ-like, Christ-spirited people. Amen. And don't forget, if you haven't already, right up there, as you can see, is all the social media platforms we are in. So if you haven't already, go there, like, share, subscribe, tick the bell, whatever it is, so that you're always up to date with every resource that we uh, upload for you. Also, there's plenty of resources there, and it's free. You can access, make sure you share them with those that need to hear it. It'll help you in your God-given calling as well, in your walk with God. Once again, congratulations. This brings us to our second part of the program, which is the collective. In the collective, I spend time with you in prayer, prophetic, whatever the Holy Spirit leads me to do. But if you have specific prayer requests, make sure you write them down in the Facebook Live chat section, the, the, the comment section, so that I'm able to see it. If you're new here, if you're watching it for the first time, let us know where you're from. Say hi. If you gave your life to the Lord, let us know. It's always, it's always exciting for us to know that there is a new person. In fact, the Word of God tells us that there is a party in heaven for every soul that is restored back to God. We want to rejoice with you. Amen? This leads us to the collective.